Good morning, everyone. Good morning and welcome to Neighborhood Unitarian Universal Church in Pasadena. Welcome to all members, friends, and guests. My name is Lynn Miyamoto and I am serving as your worship associate today. I am about 60 years old, well, I'm 60 plus years old. <laughs> I'm, I'm a Japanese American woman and I am wearing a black sweater and a turquoise colored shirt. Neighborhood Church creates and grows an inclusive community of faith connected by love, spirit, and service. We acknowledge our presence on the ancestral and unceded territory of the Gabrielino Tongva peoples, the traditional caretakers of the lands and waters of this campus. With respect for the rights and wisdom of indigenous people, we acknowledge our harmful colonial histories and commit to decolonizing our own practices, to learning new ways of being in community and with each other in good relationship with the indigenous people of this land and with the land itself. Today's service is led by senior minister, Reverend Dr. Omega Burkhardt, with music led by music director, Dr. Zaneda Robles, with associate music director, Wells Lang, and the neighborhood chorus conducted by Michael Bosto. Please take a moment to silence your devices as we begin our service. Families with young children are always welcome in the sanctuary, and there is additional seating in the entry foyer or narthex. So we have two brief announcements. The first is, please join us on November 17th after the service for the mid-year congregational meeting hosted by your board of trustees. See additional information in this week's newsletter. The second brief announcement will be um, that there is no civic action writing meeting today. That's it. More extensive announcements as well as our order of service this morning are available as a link in the Sunday email. Our order of service is also visible online by scanning the QR code on the back of your hymnal with your phone camera. Again, welcome to Neighborhood Church, whoever you are and wherever you are in your spiritual journey. Welcome to this inclusive faith community connected by love, spirit, and service.
Friends, we have gathered this morning with gratitude for all that has brought us to this day, to this moment, to this breath. An invocation and a moment of centering these words from my colleague, the Reverend Kristen Grassel Schmidt. Let us never forget that we serve our neighbors, our values, our free faith in the spirit of the many who have gone before us, who made ways where there was no way, who left legacies for us to remember, to follow, to emulate. As we prepare for the week ahead, let us pray that the fire of commitment, the spirit of truth, of love, of justice that was in those ancestors goes with us. I invite you to center yourselves in your arrival this morning with the continuation of this prayer. God of many names and beyond all naming, spirit of love, breath of life. In this time when so many stakes feel so high, help us remember that no season lasts forever that the days of the greedy and the powerful are numbered, that there is a force at work in our world and among us that lifts up the oppressed and fills the hungry with good things. In this season of growing cold, may we also remember to stoke the flame of resistance that burns within and among us, a flame that warms and unites us against the forces that lead to inequity and injustice. In this season of drought, free us from despair's well-worn ruts. Make through the deserts of our heart and our world a way for faith and for hope, for joy and love like ever-flowing streams in this season of growing darkness. Help us turn away from the glare of life's distractions so we might accept the gifts of the darkness and in the midst of all the work, look up and remember how fearfully and wonderfully we each have been made from the very stuff of stars. In the name of all that is good, and all that is holy, all that is just and right and true. Amen. Please rise in body or in spirit and join in singing our opening hymn number 1012, When I Am Frightened.
I invite all the kids, kiddos, youngsters, and young at heart to come forward for a story for all ages. For those of you just young at heart, you may not wish to sit on the floor. <laughs> but for the rest of you, you want to grab a cushion, come on over. I'm going to stand about here. I'm going to move this a little bit this way. Come on up. And we're going to read a story today. Perfect. Hi. Great. All right. Perfect. So we're going to read a story today about when something you build gets destroyed. Have, has anybody ever had the experience where you build something like Legos and then it falls over and then you're really bummed? Yeah, right? Grown-ups? Yes. Yeah. Man, it's a real bummer. There's something that's going to happen this week. It's a big deal. Maybe you've talked about it in school or the grown-ups in your lives have talked about it. Does anybody know what that is? What's, there's an election. You may have heard of it. Yeah, and a lot of grown-ups are doing a lot of talking, a lot of big feelings about it, right? And so you might be having some big feelings and stuff about it too. So a lot of people are feeling a little nervous and a little, a little scared. So I'm going to read this story today. It's called The Rabbit Listened. Yeah, we've seen this one. I know you've seen this one. It's such a good one, though, right? It's such a good one. So maybe you can help me uh, act out some of the parts when it's time, okay? This is by Corey Dorfeld. And the pictures will be up on the screen, but if you want to look here, too, that's just fine. One day, Taylor decided to build something, something new, something very special. something amazing. That is pretty amazing. I know, that would take a lot of blocks, wouldn't it? Taylor was proud. Look at that. But then, out of nowhere, it's kind of like on campus here sometimes. I know, I love the ravens and the crows. But this time they knocked it down. The chicken was the first to notice, as chickens do. <laughs> cluck, cluck. What a shame. I'm so sorry, sorry, sorry this happened. Let's talk, talk, talk about it. Cluck, cluck. Let's make a chicken sound. Cluck, cluck. Yeah, all right. Or a chicken action. Perfect. Have you have chickens <laughs> at your school. Cool school. But Taylor did not feel like talking, so the chicken left. Now came the bear. That's right. Roar, roar, how horrible. I bet you feel so angry. Let's shout about it. Roar. Let's shout like a bear. Roar. Grown-ups, you too. Roar. But Taylor didn't feel like shouting. So the bear left. The elephant, however, knew just what to do. Mm -hmm. You got it. <laughs> Trumpada, I can fix this. We just need to remember exactly the way things were. But Taylor didn't feel like remembering. So the elephant also left. One by one they came. The hyena, he he he, let's laugh about it. Let's all laugh. He he he. <laughs> the ostrich, gulp, let's hide and pretend nothing happened. The kangaroo, what a mess. Let's just throw it all away. That's right. And the snake, shh, let's go knock down. Someone else's. <laughs> but Taylor didn't feel like doing anything with anybody. So eventually, they all left. And Taylor was alone. In the quiet, Taylor didn't even notice the rabbit. 
but it moved closer and closer until Taylor could feel its warm body. Together, they sat in silence until Taylor said, please stay with me. And the rabbit listened. The rabbit listened as Taylor talked. The rabbit listened as Taylor shouted. The rabbit listened as Taylor remembered. The rabbit listened as Taylor laughed. The rabbit listened to Taylor's plans to hide and to throw everything away and to ruin things for someone else. Through it all, the rabbit never left. And when the time was right, the rabbit listened to Taylor's plan to build again. I can't wait, said Taylor. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be amazing. Look at that tower. And it's built with Taylor's imagination. It's not built yet, but built with his imagination. Pretty cool, huh? Yeah, the clouds, you got it. All right, kiddos. So this week, when all sorts of stuff is happening, it's really important to remember that you are surrounded by loving people. They want the best for you. And maybe the grown-ups in your life, they're a little scared or cranky too. So sometimes you can be like the rabbit and just accompany them and hang out with them. And that would be awesome. Okay, let's gather. Kiddos, you're going to march out to song. You're going to meet your teachers outside. Each Sunday, our congregation dedicates 100% of its contributions to 501c3 organizations or neighborhood church-based social justice activities that are making a difference in our community and the world. Each selected guest organization aligns with our community's missions and values and is nominated by church members who often are longtime volunteers and supporters of these change-making organizations. You can donate in two ways. You can use your cell phone to donate by texting the number on the screen. Or if you'd prefer to donate in person, put your donation in one of the designated boxes during the music or after the service. There's a donation box here in the front, behind the back center row, and in the narthex entry on the table. You may rise during the music to put your donation in the box if you wish. Please extend help to those in your neighborhood who may need assistance reaching the donation boxes. If you wish to make a payment towards your pledge or contrib con contribute to church operations, make a note in the subject line or use an envelope available at the donation boxes. This week, our gifts will support the UUA Disaster Relief Fund. Here with more information is Nadia Hillman. Morning. Morning. So disasters are affecting our communities and congregations with increasing um, frequency and intensity. From wildfires that consume entire regions to hurricanes and floods that leave widespread destruction, people and their communities bear the impact. The damage is both physical and emotional. And while the waters may recede and the fires extinguish, recovery requires time, effort, and resources. In the wake of Hurricane Helene, we've seen the toll firsthand in places like Asheville, North Carolina, where homes, businesses, and places of worship have been uh, devastated. 
The Unitarian Universalist Association, or UUA, is committed to standing with congregations and supporting their efforts uh, in these difficult times. That is why the UUA Disaster Relief Fund was established to assist congregations, their members, and their community partners as they rebuild. This fund represents a covenant, a promise between the UUA and the congregations and the communities they serve. Through it, the UUA provides practical support in aftermath of natural and human-caused disasters. Grants from the Disaster Relief Fund support essential needs like repairing damaged congregation buildings or securing temporary spaces for worship and gathering, supporting members or friends whose homes have been affected, and assisting local organizations that provide vital services to those ineligible for other types of aid. With the gener generosity of Unitarian Universalists across the country, we are able to open our arms to congregations in need. Today, we ask for your support. Your donation can make a tangible effort in the recovery of those communities. Please consider giving UUA Disaster Fund Relief Fund to help us meet those urgent needs. Thank you for embodying our faith and values through your generosity. Thank you for giving generously.
for our reading this morning, Praise Song for the Day by Elizabeth Alexander. Each day we go about our business, walking past each other, catching each other's eye or not, about to speak or speaking. All about us is noise, all about us is noise and bramble and thorn and din, each one of our ancestors on our tongues. Someone is stitching up a hem, darning a hole in a uniform, patching a tire, repairing the things in need of repair. Someone is trying to make music somewhere with a pair of wooden spoons on an oil drum with a cello, boombox, harmonica, voice. A woman and her son wait for the bus. A farmer considers the changing sky. A teacher says, take out your pencils, begin. We encounter each other in words, words spiny or smooth, whispered or declaimed, words to consider, reconsider. We cross dirt roads and highways that mark the will of someone and then others who said, I need to see what's on the other side. I know there's something better down the road. We need to find a place where we are safe. We walk into that which we cannot yet see. Say it plain, that many have died for this day. Sing the names of the dead who brought us here, who lain the train tracks, raised the bridges, picked the cotton and the lettuce, built brick by brick the glittering edifices they would then keep clean and work inside of. Praise song for the struggle, praise song for the day. Praise song for every hand lettered sign, the figuring it out at the kitchen table. Some live by love, thy neighbor as thyself. Others by first do no harm or take no more than you need. What if the mightiest word is love? Love beyond marital, filial, or national love that casts a widening pool of light. Love with no need to preempt grievance. In today's sharp sparkle, this winter air, anything can be made. Any sentence begun on the brink, on the brim, on the cusp, praise song for walking forward in that light. That was given at President Barack Obama's inauguration. Kyrie Elei song is a prayer for mercy. <laughs>
That sounds like a windy fall day. <laughs> Beautiful. There are movements in the world that are unobservable. They are too slow, unlike the wind today. They are too slow for the naked eye to perceive. They're too lengthy, lengthy for our mere mortal lives to observe. Our planet, seemingly still yet hurtling through space. Movement of the tectonic plates, for example, that rumble and create pressure for years. Erosion of ancient volcanoes creating mountains and then hills and then piles of volcanic rock that only hint at their former fiery power. And then, sometimes, all at once, change erupts. A rapid shift that is observable, it is measurable, and it is meaningful. In 1927, Thomas Parnell, the first professor of physics at the University of Queensland, devised a scientific experiment whose conclusion he would never be able to appreciate. In fact, almost 100 years later, it is still going strong. It is slow, imperceptibly slow, but it is still going strong. Professor Parnell proposed that pitch, the black stuff that's made of ancient plant, plant matter. It was used in ancient boat making and as road tar and all sorts of other uses in manufacturing and building. He proposed that pitch was not a solid, but rather was a liquid at room temperature. Now, at normal room temperature, the substance can be brittle. It can actually be shattered when it's hit by something else, such as a hammer. Professor Parnell thought that with enough time, this seemingly solid substance would demonstrate the properties of a liquid at room temperature. So he kicked off his experiment in 1927 by placing pitch that had been heated into a sealed glass funnel. And then he left it there for three years. After three years, he snipped off the tip of the glass. And in 1930, his experiment was finally off to the races. The very slow races. It took eight years for the first drop of pitch to fall out of that funnel. And he missed it. <laughs> As did his successor, Professor John Mainstone, who conducted the experiment for the following 52 years. He missed every drop. The third conductor of the experiment is still waiting for the next unobstructed view. There have been some technical issues. I think they got one on camera. But somehow it always seems to happen when no one is watching. The ninth drop fell in 2014, 14, and the tenth is predicted to fall in about eight years. So you can set your timers. You can watch it live streamed also. <laughs> if you're needing a little peace in your life. The time between the drops has lengthened, most noticeably after the installation of air conditioning in the building where the experiment was housed. Sometimes things in our world move at such a slow pace that we do not notice them changing. Such is our, our work towards a beloved community, a community of justice, a community that is mutual, that builds strength from our interdependence, a community of shared values, different minds, of course, and different ways of living, but shared values centering love for one another, support for each other's thriving. Sometimes, 
like times such as these leading up to a national election, despair takes hold. Despair because we cannot see evidence of that aspirational world. It feels like we are in a mean time where love is seen as weak instead of strong, when we feel a deep despair as blatant lies are purported to be universal truths, when hateful language is claimed to be a joke, when values are manipulated to represent the wealth, the greed, the interest of only a few, and when religion itself is used as a banner to hide behind, a shield from which hate is hurled, and processes are created that are deceitful, based in shame and fear and a desire for domination. When some intentionally sow chaos, mistruths, a fever pitch of intentional misinformation to hide secret plans that would control others when some call for violence. It is intentional. It's intentional gaslighting. It is intentional pain and the creation of the perception that there's no clear choice for good, that all is lost, and that all is corrupt, so we might as well just submit already. Despair and anxiety and cognitive dissonance. If you are feeling this, it is real. If you are feeling it, affirm that it exists, acknowledge it, and locate it. Where is it in your body? Is it in the pit of your stomach? Perhaps it's in your furrowed brow or the way your shoulders are tight. Maybe it's in your constant doom scrolling on your phone. Or perhaps it's in how you flinch at loud noises recently. Or the heightened emotion you feel at other un seemingly, seemingly unrelated occurrences in your life. I know it is for me. Let us take a moment, breathe together. Send love to that knot in your stomach. Let your shoulders fall from your ears. Unclench your hands. Unfurrow your brow for just a few moments. You are okay. You are all right. We are okay. Now, I am not dismissing your fear, and I am not claiming toxic positivity that everything will always be okay because I actually think that would be a mistruth itself. It would be a coercion to make us all feel a little bit better in a time when we are craving something normal and tangible and predictable. We are in a time that writer James Cassio describes as the age of chaos. His article written in 2020 at the height of the pandemic foretells this feeling today. He writes, ultimately a chaotic world means that we must seek clarity rather than certainty. Clarity rather than certainty. 
Cassio describes this time period in which we are living as one of BANI, that's B-A-N-I, it's an acronym, BANI, rather than that of VUCA, which is V-U-C-A. VUCA was an acronym coined in the 1980s to say volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous. Instead, Bonnie suggests that, excuse me, Cassio suggests that Bonnie is a better way to describe where we are right now. B A N I, brittle, anxious, nonlinear, incomprehensible. Bonnie is a better way to frame and respond to the current state of the world, he suggests. Some of the changes we see happening to our politics, our environment, our society, and our technologies, some of those changes are familiar. They are stressful in their own way, perhaps, but a kind that we have seen and dealt with before. But so many of the upheavals now underway are not familiar. They're surprising and completely disorienting. They manifest in ways that don't just add to the stress we experience, they multiply that stress. Perhaps you are feeling that today. You are feeling it in your body, perhaps you feel it in your heart. Cassio goes on to explain that there are antidotes for this. The antidote for brittleness, brittleness is the illusory strength of the pitch that can be shattered by the hammer. Brittleness has an antidote in resilience and slack. The antidote for anxiety is empathy and mindfulness. Nonlinearity, a world where there is incongruity between cause and effect. Nonlinearity can be cured by flexibility and context. And incomprehensibility, surprise at moments when we can't predict an outcome or when the process itself, excuse me, the process itself still surprisingly works despite serious flaws. Moments of incomprehensibility call us to be intuitive and transparent. Brittleness, nonlinearity, incomprehensibility. Professor Parnell saw in that mass of black pitch in his lab the improbability of liquidity. A brittleness in one form illusory strength in one form that he predicted would be made flexible with context and time. A legacy of custodians, of scientific chaplains to the process and to that shared experience followed him and his vision. A legacy of custodians who waited and still wait for the incomprehensible to liquidize and form a drop, and it does, even if they don't witness it. They had the ability, they have the ability to imagine wildly. It is a brave wonderment at possibility. It might not seem like much, but that pitch drop experiment has now been replicated at other institutions. It has led to greater understanding of the hydrocarbons that can be found naturally or manufactured. It has led to other physics experiments, increasing knowledge and creating new questions related to liquids and viscosity. And it has recalibrated scientific understandings of time and scope. What if an antidote to brittleness of the despair of our moment when we feel like we're going to crack is also wonderment? What if it is also joy? Since we met last, met last the Dodgers won. <laughs> There can be joy in this work. There can be 
wild imagination. It is there, a prophetic imagination. This is what Jamar Tisby writes about prophetic imagination in our democratic system. He describes it this way. As a nation, we would say in some future, if we can overcome these demons haunting our democracy, what else might we be able to achieve? A wave of civic-minded and kind people would decide to run for elected office because they see service as a privilege of residing in this nation and also see a path to do so without losing their souls. He says, a surge of civic chaplains would emerge. They consider it their sacred duty to comfort a populace fairly traumatized by the chaos and sense of threat that caused them to lose sleep. It made their breathing shallow. It put knots in their shoulders and cost them dear relationships. A prophetic imagination, he imagines, a bold world that may exceed our expectations, that may even exceed our aspirations, one where we are filled with loving kindness. And we send that loving kindness out to all people, and we, in turn, feel that sense of connectedness and wellness in our core, in our aching hearts, in our furrowed brows, and our scrunched up shoulders. But we aren't there yet. We are in the meantime. We are in the waiting between the now and whatever comes next. And likely this waiting will not be resolved on Tuesday evening or Wednesday. Perhaps by next Sunday when we meet again. And while there might be some sort of resolution, the act of repair will take much longer. What is important is that we know we have a community that wants the best for this world. And as the rabbit in today's story taught us, that it's good to be together, to hold each other's pain and to dream of a better time, of what we could build together. Tomorrow on Monday evening at 6 p.m. in the neighborhood house, you are invited to join me and others from this community to a vigil to ease your anxious hearts as you wait for Tuesday. This gathering will have some music and movement and time for prayer. After the election on Wednesday, join members of this church community and those of other progressive liberal religious communities in Pasadena as we gather in public witness, interfaith, non-denominational, non-partisan public witness in front of the First United Methodist Church on Colorado. I'll be joined by several of my clergy colleagues in leading an evening together. Together, we will build a world with our prophetic imaginations, a world made, perhaps slowly, and then all at once, like a gradual drop of tar pitch into a glass vial, slowly, and then quickly, we will chaplain in this new world together. We will conduct it into being. It may take days or months or even years of repair. But in the meantime, know that you are not alone in this. You are not alone. You are surrounded by love. Together, we wait, centered, resilient, empathetic, mindful, flexible, and seeking clarity rather than certainty. May it be so.
please rise in body or in spirit and join us in singing our closing hymn number 1031, filled with loving kindness. May I be filled with loving kindness, may I be well, may I be peaceful and at ease, may I be whole. May you be filled with loving kindness, may you be well, may you be peaceful and at ease. May you be whole. May we be filled with loving kindness. May we be well. May we be peaceful and at ease. May we be whole. Amen.